had enough time to oh. to talk about all that stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, to go into a lot of detail. Uh huh. Uh how me talk we up Okay, uh Diamond Chia Copy Do. Elijah Hopkins Dim Yeah. Uh welcome everybody to our uh guest speaker podcast series. Um Elijah Hopkins. I'm streaming at you live from Fort Peck Community College. Thank everybody for uh listening to us. Um we're streaming live on our Facebook page as well. Um these all these recordings on May 11th, 2020. We're also going to record these and upload them on our YouTube channel. We have a series of uh, cultural videos there, so check those out. Um, but I want to thank uh, Dexy Jim Redigo again for joining us today. And we've had a lot of uh, rich conversation the past, uh, I guess, four weeks now. And so uh, we'll we'll pick up kind of maybe where we left off. And I'm not sure exactly what he has in store for us, but. Uh, uh, again, Jim, I'll give you the floor and uh, uh, pidama. Ah, me dar ki ape. Wanas sape o kuya. It's good to be here, um, Buffalo chasing people. It's good to uh, share things that were shared with me in my lifetime uh, with the uh, elders. Um, my journey is, was you. We wonder if it, you know really on our life journey if it was uh, accidental or pur on purpose. Um, one of my favorite movies is like uh, 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 Forrest Gump, and and uh, I've done many things I never really intended to do in life. And um, at the end of that movie is, uh, as it ends, there's a, a, a fluff that, that's kind of floating in the air. To me, it, that's kind of a, a metaphor for life. The wind takes us different places and, and we never know where we're gonna end up. And, what we're going to do. So, you know, they always say, be open-minded and prepare, prepare yourself for anything. And um, that saying is true. When one door closes, another will open. You know, if you live a good life and you're a good person. I'm going to uh, start off with a, a, a prayer song. And, uh, this is a song to, to remind us to pray. What it means is uh, to talk to a relative, because all creation were related to everything in life. Everything on this earth were related to. That's the difference between uh, us and the, uh, the non-native. You know, we believe everything has a spirit, even a rock. So that song is to remind us to, 
to use our voice to pray. Cheke a kichi un unyapi na daku shkashkapi. What that means is our belief is that prayer is what holds the earth together, not gravity. They say when one side of the earth gets weak, the other, the other side is affected and gets weak. So we have to continue to pray, pray for, nowadays we hear all kinds of news. There's a war in Ukraine, you know, there's a disease that's consuming this world all over. And uh, so, and everybody, you know, we all have somebody, a relative who needs our prayer. Somebody who's in the hospital. There's those who are, Away chayapi means they're, they're crying in tears for a loved one. So we have to remember those as well. You know, those who are mourning the loss of a loved one as well. And they said, you know, have compassion for, for one another. I talked about tapa waka wakea he the uh, throwing of the ball ceremony for young girls. Uh, I'm trying to remember if, uh, uh, if I said who and where it came from. Uh, there's a, there was a man named Moose Slowly who had a dream. In our, uh, our belief is that uh, Iwo Hamble, Iwo Hamble Yuha, a lot of things that we have in life, our ceremonies and stuff, they come through, come from actual things that happen and they come from dreams. Wawa Kayuha, we have those uh, sacred dreams, we say. And um, that was one purpose of uh, uh, the Hombletia, the vision quest, is to to uh, through these get these gift of dreams, we we kind of understand uh, uh, what we might have to do in life ceremonies and what our purpose is. In mid May, we go up to uh, Peshla or Wamaka Chante Oganaka, with the center of the Black Hills. There's a ceremony that we do up there. It's for all, uh, all life. We offer prayers for, for all life. For there's four levels of life, huh? The wing nation, Kupa Oyate. The Hu. Dopa Oyate, the four legged, the Hu Numpa Oyate, the Asloa Oyate, those that crawl on the earth. So, mid May is kind of a, a, the middle of new life cycle. And all life's going to. Uh, give birth pretty soon. Those birds lay their eggs. They're sitting on their eggs right now. And pretty soon they're gonna hatch. The buffalo, you know, are, are some of them start having their, their calves and so forth. So we go up there and we pray and we, we put out offerings. Um, we put out the uh, seed like corn, see, corn is sacred. Well, means is a sacred. We put that out for those flying relatives, winged. We put out uh, a buffalo tongue, ka traje, for those that are, are meat eaters. We put out water, mini, 
for for all levels of life. All that life means water. And we put down tobacco. And we say prayers for 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 all new life that's going to come. And that's uh, usually done around around the middle of May. I heard somebody uh, went up there last week, and they said after after three moon cycles after the uh, the spring, well, if you count that, twenty eight days in the moon, it hasn't been three moon cycles. So sometimes uh, uh, people kind of make up things to justify what they do. So usually. Uh, Spring equinox and summer solstice, mid-May is halfway in between the two. So um, if, you, if you did three moon cycles, that would be the, the end of the quarter. You think about it, three, three moons is a quarter, a little bit over three moons. Um, so, Anyways, uh, they say, uh, I was told if you received good health, if you received and your prayers were answered um, to put out a buffalo heart as a wopila. And uh, you can go to these places um, and go up to Bear Butte you can go to Peshla, you can go to Matotipila, and uh, you can do it there if you want to go to a sacred site, or you can, you can just simply put it out by your home. We have uh, seven types of sacred food offerings that we, that we give, and uh, the buffalo heart and the buffalo tongue are one of them. The Udopa Uhampi, the puppy, is a is a sacred food offering that we we give. Um, there's a story about why we eat puppy. Um, and they say a long time ago, Wodoha. Uh, Wodoha is, is like I said, uh, it's our version of once upon a time. There was a uh, Tioshpaya, a band who was in a famine and they were running out of food and they were to the point where they were boiling their moccasins to make soup and eating their moccasins. And a man had a dream. In, the, in his dream, like I mentioned, we all humble, you He had a dream, and in his dream, he was a puppy, a dog, came to him and said, I understand your, your people are having a hard time, so I'm going to offer my life to you. When you take my life, take it with compassion. And my flesh will bring nourishment and help you survive this difficult time. So honor me. So that man woke up from his dream and he talked to his relatives about his dream. And the first puppy feast was held. They say a puppy, a dog saved a band that year. So the puppy has been a, a, a sacred food offering for good health. You want good outcomes in a ceremony. Part of the grass dance ceremony is the offering of a puppy. I was told too, uh, the puppy represents a bear. Among the two-legged nation, the bear has wisdom. 
the bear has uh, uh, unbelievable courage and so we don't actually eat bear per se but we eat a puppy and if you ever seen a puppy singed or, or, or without its hair on, it resembles a bear. And this is old, this old man told me uh, first time I went to a uh, uh, grass dance ceremony, he explained that, that to me. And I think about it, there's, a, there's a many meanings in life I've learned. And that's one meaning of, of uh, eating puppy. Um, so, we, you know, we, we only get the puppy that's uh, fresh off the mother's milk, pure puppy. And that's the only one we eat. We don't, we, not one that's been hand fed table scraps or anything like that just one that's off its mother's milk that's pure. There's a lot of connection in, in what we do in, the, in our feast. The old way is to have our children serve it because the children are pure. We have an opposite belief of the, uh, uh, the white man, like I said, we believe we're born pure. And as we travel through life, we learn wrong ways and these wrong ways are are are, are learned they're not they're not something that uh, we do naturally we we observe or our, our elders or other relatives and through their behavior we learn dysfunction becomes uh, normal for some people. I'm gonna talk about those ceremonies I talked about, the seven are tools to help us maintain our, our balance in life. I mentioned uh, about the natural laws we call wo'opre. Wo'opre is the natural laws and how we're supposed to be living. There's four basic ones. And those are the simplest. Then there's seven, 12. But for every one, there's an opposite. And when you see yourself going towards an opposite in life, it's time to restore balance in your life. Those ceremonies, the sweat lodge is, is one way we restore our balance. The way my brother put it is he said it's like you're we're like cups so we go through life daily our cup fills up and pretty soon it's it's uh overflowing everything builds up and you know sometimes we we have uh mental breakdowns and uh, we start doing uh dysfunctional things as a result. So one way we bring our balance back is, is to empty our cup. We can go to a sweat, we can pray, we can go sit, a, sit, sit alone out, out someplace in the country that you love, just sit there. And I mentioned about a otiwote, a lot of uh, power is otiwote, where we replenish ourselves. And that's how we maintain balance in life. Those seven, um, they, I hear these four, seven and 12 um, virtues of being a good person and living a good life. And, and they're all kind of uh, um, mixed, you know, and it's based because of uh, uh, each tio spaye has their diff different way, their own way of doing things. We call 
Well, Chante Ogunaka is a, a generosity. It means living in the, in the heart, living from the heart, how we're supposed to live. Wachitanka, another virtue, is uh, the Kasei fortitude, or to have a strong mind. Because I said, if your mind's weak, it'll talk you out of doing things that your heart tells you you should do. Now I say that first intuition, the first thought that you have is your heart telling you, your spirit telling you, this is what you should do. But we always second guess ourselves. So if you have a strong mind, then you won't let that happen to you. That's one purpose of the Sundance or Hamletia. You sit there and you, you pray and when you're done saying your prayers, then you say it over again. You say them, then you say them again and again and again. And you keep repeating them. That way your mind doesn't wander off and you start thinking negative. Oh, it's too hard for me. You know, I could be home sleeping in my warm bed with my family. Oh, I miss my kids. Oh, I miss my wife or, you know, or your significant other. Well, you need, ha, uh, is uh, respect. Yeah. Waunshila well, is uh, caring. There's different, you know, there's, uh, you know, compassion, caring for one another. There's, you know, there's different uh, uh, words you could use. Whatever you feel is uh, that translation in English. Wo'ohitika is uh, courage. It's not uh, uh, bravery, we say too. It's not uh, uh, like, being able to go over there and fight, but it's also being brave enough to, to believe in what you're doing, to stand up against uh, bullies and, and stuff like that. We also say, whoa, uh, woksape is wisdom. We say in life, our ultimate goal is to achieve wisdom. In the medicine wheel, there's the four colors, the black to the west, the red to the north, the yellow to the east, and the white to the south. It, and they told me the original meaning is our life journey. We're born from darkness. We learn in life is uh, red. So black represents Tumpi the darkness of our mother's womb. The red is learning. The yellow is wo'ablaza. We say through uh, our traditions, we choka na ichumpiki he wo'ablaza. Through learning our traditions and doing them, we learn enlightenment. It's the same in life or anything we do. You know, we, we go to work, maybe something doesn't go right. And we learn from what we did. And we learn enlightenment is looking back and saying, well, there's, pro there's a better way of doing this. And next time I'm gonna do it this other way. That's enlightenment. The last is, uh, like I said, is woksape, uh, is uh, wisdom. You say when our hair turns white. But nowadays people say, oh, that's the four colors of man on earth. The black man, the red man, the yellow man, and the white man. When these, when these concept of those four colors came about, was a time 
when dinosaurs were on the earth a long, long time ago, before we knew of other colors of man. But not as we adopt that as, as one meaning of that, that uh, those four colors. So they say that, uh, as I said before, that uh, hopefully when your hair turns white, you'll have wisdom, what that means. But uh, they say not everybody will have wisdom. Some will just be old. Those are the four colors. Uh, the other, another one is wawachwala, which is uh, some translated as humility. Others, it's uh, to be at peace in life. And as you get old, you, 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 you don't like conflict anymore. And there are some people that are like that. You know, they avoid conflict. They'd rather be at peace with all creation. And that's uh, the ultimate goal is to have a, a peaceful life. But for everything, there's a, a, an opposite. An opposite uh, uh, an opposite uh, for that, you know, to say uh, is, is if we expand it out to 12, means to help, be helpful to one another. We say uh, to, not, to not be helpful. As I, I mentioned, uh, is uh, our purpose in life. And our purpose is to love and help one another in life. We say, uh, when you give away a generosity, says, uh, you know, don't worry. You know, it'll come back to you four times. The same thing with prayers when we pray for one another. Those prayers we send out, they're going to come back to us four times in our, in our time of need. So, you know, don't worry. That's generosity, too, is to, to have good thoughts for our relatives. They, uh, there's a, there's a, a story. I, I heard this uh, in, among the uh, Chippewa Cree and also... Uh, Lakota, that uh, when our time's up, there's there's a, a, a teepee, four teepees, and those four basic virtues of wo'ope. Each one, there's an old man sitting in them, a grandfather, and we have to tell our, our life story related to one of those four big virtues. In our life, we, we call it ozoye woglakapi, but we would recount our, our life journey. They said, Itoka dakia, we choti wa, lila trankana oyoki pichare, tipi yoki he el tima, ho wana o chitima ni wa yaka. Kapi Kadacha Daya Ichupo Doske Apetu Wan El Ake Yakupi Ktelo O Hechitoske Omaya Tiki Heha Oyo Glakapi Ktelo You're going to have to tell your your story, recount your life deeds in that way. When I was growing up, uh, there, there's a word we, we, we say, wohokokia. Uh, wohokokia is when 
you see uh, somebody doing something wrong. And then we, we, then they go up and maybe a relative, an elder or somebody, they'll come up and talk to you in a helping way. That's what it means. You know, I had that happen to myself. I, uh, I went, I was dancing one time when I was young and an aunt, older aunt was sitting there that uh, one of my favorite aunts and I went and sat down later and talked to her and she said, uh, what happened was uh, uh, I danced backwards <laughs> and she said, uh, uh, Toshka, you, you, you shouldn't, uh, don't dance backwards. Said, to us, it represents uh, 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 cowardice to, to retreat. So our, our warriors, our men, they never, they never backed down, they never retreated from our enemy. So don't dance backwards. So, you know, and I had respect and love for that aunt. So that's the way I took it. It's a way to help talk to me and helping me in, in a good way. But nowadays we take it as a, a, a butt chewing. We take it wrong. And I always learned that if they didn't care about you, then they would let you continue on making that mistake. But uh, they will hook up you and, and, and talk to you, they're trying to help you. So, so remember that, you know. We throw you, those are, are words of wisdom that uh, uh, people come and they, they, they say to us. But like I said, the, uh, nowadays a lot of stuff we do is kind of, uh, kind of, uh, uh, we react in a, in a negative way rather than reacting in a positive way. And that's, that's one thing I learned is that, that uh, you know, you could take something as good or bad, but to remain positive, to help, to remain in balance, even take the bad in a good way. My uh, my older brother used to say, Iwaka. Iwaka means your, your words are sacred. With them, you can take a life, you can save a life. So, to go with that, Wahokokia, we have to remember too that, you know, with our words, you know, we could cause somebody to uh, to uh, take their own life. As, you know, that's what bullying does. Nowadays, we have a lot of bullying. You know, you could say it's lateral violence against one another. And lateral violence doesn't have to be physical. It could be emotional and mental. So, We, uh, there was a uh, time, a long time ago, when we, when we made a chief, we would uh, talk to them and help them. And when we made a chief, we, we would have an a elder female relative talk to them before that bonnet was put upon them, put upon their head, talk to them to remind them in a helping way of their obligations and responsibilities for wearing a bonnet. We call it, uh, uh, the people call those, those war bonnets, 
It's not a war bonnet. If you didn't earn those feathers in war, if you didn't earn those feathers in service to your people in defending them, there's not a war bonnet. It's a peace bonnet. And there's seven, we call them English, uh, crowns of the earth that we wear. There's seven of them, not just a uh, uh, wapaha. The Rejihota Sumpi, the uh, Sundance crown. That's a, a, the same level as a bonnet, a feather bonnet. The buffalo headdress, the same level. A wapegnaka is the same level. And we often think about that, that feather bonnet is above all of them, but it's just one of, one of seven earth crowns. And those are connected to the sacred. There's 28 feathers. And as I said before, 28 days for a moon cycle, 28 willows to make a sweat lodge, 28 poles make a Sundance Lodge connected to the sacred. There's 28 spaces on, on both your hands. On that medicine wheel, we, I was talking to Tosca about the medicine wheel up in, in Wyoming. So there's 28 spokes. That's all related to the sacred and to the bonnet. But we don't we don't connect them, you know. When a man earned enough through his deeds, minimum twenty eight, then then a bonnet would be made for him. He earned that right. But nowadays we 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 give them give them away like candy and you know. <laughs> but. Um, Long time ago, they were earned through the chief, uh, you know, a peace bonnet. That bonnet is is a uh, is a symbol of his position of respect. Today, in the next couple of weeks, uh, we're people are graduating, and we end up tying these. Uh, uh, medicine wheels for a girl we attach plumes for a boy we attach feathers you know I, I wear one when I dance I wear it on the right the right side the right side is a, a male I wear a feather one for each name I have I don't I don't wear I don't wear, you see a lot of male dancers wearing plumes. I don't wear them, those, these, uh, these plumes belong to women. When we attach a plume or a feather to a medicine well, then it becomes a wapegnaka. Wapegnaka or oshkatapi, we call those. The girl's goes on the on the left side if you're gonna tie one in their hair, the heart side. Wamblisu is one way to say uh, eagle plume. That represents uh, the creator's breath of life. The women have that right to wear this because they breathe life into the world like the creator. So now we, we award them, we, we give them when we, when we give names. There's many meanings in life. I've said, you know, 
uh, I get this from people that, oh, you know, you're saying something wrong or, or right, you know, uh, the right way is this, but, you know, they don't realize that, that uh, there's more than one way, more than one word. When we wear these, it means we are also part of the Wakia Oyate, the thunder being, the thunder nation. That's what it means too. This represents that we believe in our traditions. We believe in our, our, our sacred rights. We believe in the pipe. That's what rep wearing this represents. But nowadays, everybody wears one, you know, especially dancers and stuff like that. All of them wear it and they wear it all kinds of different ways. And, you know, I'm just, what I'm saying is, is what I was taught, you know, what was told to me when I was under trying to understand things when I was young. So graduation, we're gonna, uh, people are looking out for medicine wheels and you know, put feathers on there and tie them, tie them on our graduate as a, as a symbol and an accomplishment of their accomplishment through education. And we're also gonna give them star quilts. And again, the, the star quilt represents that we are also related to uh, the stars. Our ancestors live in the stars. We chahu, hunkake. We are those whose ancestors live in the star world. And they represent the buffalo star world. Shina, we chakpe. So we give those to, to acknowledge and also to encourage them in life, our relatives, you know, the opposite of uh, those virtues is uyuta, is uh, what they call a hubris, hubris, I guess, uh, which is, you know, it's kind of a, a a complicated word, but then in the English language, but then if you look it up, you know, it means to be full of yourself, you know, to believe you're above others. When we believe we're, 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 we're all equal in life. No one is better, no one is below. Shicha wa ayapi means uh, uh, gossip. Often you'll hear, hear it said in a slang way, kayapi, you know. But uh, to gossip is, is uh, the opposite of, of uh, saying, saying good about others. I was told uh, one, one thing is to do these others, when you have bad thoughts, they spit it out, spit on the ground, so you cast them from your mouth. Because you don't have to say things bad. If you think them, it's, it's the same as saying them. So they used to spit, cast those bad thoughts from your, from your mouth, from your mind. So we always want to uh, think good. Today, um, sometimes you'll, we'll sing honor songs for, for somebody and we'll hold our hand up like that. Almost like saluting them. Ayugalata. Ayugalata pi. It means to, to send out your positive thoughts to them. You know, to be to be uh, proud of them, to be happy for them. We send out our good thoughts. In the, 
Sundance, we stand on the ground with our bare feet. The washichu call this grounding. We stand there and we dance and we pray. And we hold our hands up. There's a time we hold our hands up. A We don't, we, as native, we don't pray like this. We hold our hand up to the creator. There's a hole in our feet. And that connects us, we become a khan, a life aim. And that connects us. And that energy comes up from the earth to our heart. It goes up to our mind and then to the creator, to creation. That's why we hold our hand up like that in prayer. You see those old pictures, those old guys holding the pipe and one hand's like that. That's what they're doing. There's a hole in the palm of your hand. And that energy travels through there. Wakipaje is a, a malice to have ill feelings. Those, uh, again, that's opposite. Wo na wizina, jealousy. You know, sometimes uh, jealousy and envy, you know, that's how people shoot medicine or shoot negative with just their thoughts, you know, as you're walking by or whatever. You have that, and you know, it shoots, shoots it out towards you. That's how we get shoot, shot by medicine. My bad thoughts, you know. So, Tawicha Tepi is uh, to take a life. We, you know, we, it, we put T, which refers to Tiwake or Tiyoshpaye or Tiyoganaka, a family. And they say when you when you murder or take a life, we end. You end a a family. You end a tiyoshpaye, a band. So take a life has consequences. And we never we never took a life unless we had to a long time ago. Our ancestors used to, they would, they would go up on a hill and a ridge. The first time they saw a uh, washichu, white man coming on our land. And they, they, on the horse, they, they, on the ridge, they watched them all along lined up. And then they would uh, uh, geisha be. Like that yell, the yell was to to scare them, so they would turn around or leave it fast. And that was a purpose of, of uh, uh, Gisha, be one of the purposes. So we never took life. Tawachi shicha. Tawachi shicha is. Uh, Greed, to be greedy. There was one, one, one const, constellation called uh, Nape Wichakte, the hand. There's a story about uh, a chief who was greedy and selfish. And the Wakia punished him. And they took his arm and hid it because of that, his greed and his selfishness. Now I mentioned wu'ukiyashin, to not help, is another. So this is the opposite. You know, if you find yourself going 
we're doing those things, we, we, we usually stop ourselves. And, you know, that's maintaining our, our balance is, is that Ryokalata is, like I said, when a, when a, uh, a woman, elderly female, goes in and talks to a, a person who's being made a chief. I don't know if they do that anymore, but that's, that's a, the old way. It's part of that making a chief ceremony. Remind them, an older female relative, because they earned that right by giving life. We all come from a woman. You know, a woman puts her family first. A woman puts her relatives first. And that's what she reminds us to put the people first, protect women and children, and those uh, who are handicapped, the widows. You know, the, they also say, you know, believe in our, our traditions and believe in our ways. The pipe goes with the leadership, but today our leaders say, they don't carry a pipe. Yeah, they want to put that bonnet on, but they don't have, they don't carry that pipe in the other hand, the Chanupa. The name Chanupa comes from the fact a long time ago, before we had iron, we would split the stem. We would hollow out the middle and then we'd glue it back together. Tatra numpa. Two, two bodies is another way of saying it. Cha numpa is two woods from the fact that we split and we glued them back together. Tatra is body numpa. The stem and the bowl go together. Now, we see we see that, but we don't step back and look further at it. There's seven parts of the pipe. The bowl, the opening where the stem goes in, the hole, the part of the stem that goes into the bowl. The stem itself, the quill work that goes around it, the last part of the pipe is a pipe song when we fill a pipe. The to sing that song completes the pipe. And that's the purpose of that. These, uh, uh, I don't know, probably everybody probably heard the story about the coming of the pipe. From what I was told, it happened over at uh, uh, Devil's Tower or Matotipila. That's one reason why Matotipila is uh, sacred. The Sundance came too around that area, Matotipila. So that's why a long time ago, when there was one Sundance, it was at Bear's Lodge. But, you know, we, we think it's uh, often uh, a different reason why. I talked a little bit about that medicine wheel. I talk about the pipe before and how, how that stone got red. And we've heard the story of the coming of the pipe and nowadays, uh, there's people who, who behave badly with the pipe. And you got to remember, in the pipe is good and bad. We don't have a word for evil. We, we say uh, shicha. 
Lila Shika, you know, really bad. Yeah. Well, wash day is, is really, you know, wash day day, really good. You know, those are the two concepts we have. We don't have uh, the concept of evil that's Christian based. Our children are, are when we're born, they're born pure and innocent. We say, Wakayeja. Wakayeja means they see sacred. Wakayeja. Waka sacred. The sacred will, will reveal themselves to kids and children because they're pure and innocent. So sometimes you'll see a baby laying there and they'll be looking off into the corner or somewhere up in the ceiling. And they're they're talking. They say they, they see that there's a spirit up there and they're talking to that spirit. So the whole purpose of of of, uh, of sweat of smudging is to bring ourselves back to when we were a child, when we were pure and innocent. They say when we're prayer and innocent, then the creator will come when we when we pray and, and call the creator, his helpers, the spirits that that come. In the sweat lodge, like I said, Otala, the willows are, are across the four directions. That means that represents a, a, a good way, the right way in life. Vayaglakia. These are the willows that go between the willows in the four directions. This represents the pre presence of dysfunction, of bad, and that's balance in life. We also call it the uh, Wuwila Wabluska, dysfunctional ways. And again, these are, are, are learned. Uh, through the ceremonies, we, we were given things too to help us maintain balance. Pejihota, we say, Pejihota a pe blaskashka. The flat leaves. A lot of times uh, we burn this, you know, we, we, don't, we don't think that the real purpose of this is to keep bad away, to keep negative away. We wear, we wear a crown at Sundance. And this is to keep the negative out of our mind. We wear these sage wristlets and anklets because as I said, there's a channel here that goes through your body. It comes from the earth and that's to protect what enters our body. The same thing with this. If you go to a ceremony and, you know, and sometimes you have to do this, you take a piece of sage and put it behind your ear. This so negative thoughts won't come into your, into, into your mind. Ochloka shakawi. We say that uh, the face is sacred the seven openings in their face. One, two, the ears. One, three, four, the eyes. Five, six, the nose and the mouth, the seven openings of the face is a sacred. We have Wachaga. 
or chagana, that's uh, sweet grass. What people don't understand is that the sweet grass is for prayers. We want, to, we want our prayers to be heard. We burn sweet grass in that sense. Our prayers are, are taken, our good prayers are taken. They say that uh, when we load a pipe, we, we uh, take that tobacco each pinch we, we burn sweet grass. So our prayers, then we will pocket the pipe. If you if you ha have a power, I don't know if people do this. I was told that uh, you take around sweet grass and you and you azilia or you smudge the the uh, arena, the power arena, before the power starts, and you do that afterwards, so that people have a good journey home. I mentioned these things. We, you know, we, we, we smudge ourselves. We already says that. We say azilia. Azilia means to take something uh, negative out. We have uh, cedar. Ante. But people don't, uh, you know, in the Sundance, we burn cedar. You know, cedar is for spirits, so they'll come and they'll stay with us. So we take it around that hochoka and we we burn it, so those spirits will come and they'll stay with us. And that's one purpose of the uh, cottonwood tree. The shaking of the leaves calms them and they'll stay with us. But uh, people think it's a smudge going around and, uh, you know, they uh, smudge themselves with it, but it's a, it's a, it's an offering of our snappy. There's another uh, wagle is a, uh, it's a, that's what cedar is. It's a calling. It's a calling, calling, uh, offering for spirits. But uh, we we. We treat it like it's a smudge. You know, we, if you have eagle feathers, uh, the first time you use them, you, you smudge them with cedar, I was taught, because the eagle likes the scent of cedar, because spirits like the smell of cedar. There's one more. These are the first, these are the four, the four medicines for. Each one goes in a different direction. The other is Chanshishila. Uh, but there's other, there's other medicines that we burn. It's a calling medicine. Uh, it's another one, calling medicine. Chanakpa so, Pejuta, they call it. Uh, uh, Diamond willow fungus. These things are 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 all all uh, given to us to help us in life. We were given medicines. We were given ceremonies to to help us. We were given words of wisdom by our elders to help us. I'm going to end it with, uh, end this pretty soon, and. Um, there was a time when, when uh, man, through his behavior, was going to be wiped off from the earth. And all creation gathered together to discuss man's behavior because they were ind indiscriminately killing. So the four legged said, I'm going to create a disease. To white man from the earth. And afterwards they, they, they left. And the plant 
the plant nation heard what happened. So it came to somebody in a dream and said, this is the four-legged said, they're gonna wipe you off from the earth create a disease to kill you, but we're gonna help you. We're gonna offer our life with our body, with our, the root, our flowers, our leaves, our stem, or every part of us is, is gonna help you. Wahutka, the gift of medicine that uh, so ever since then uh, uh, we had medicine men that uh, and those gifted that have sacred dreams and they work with medicine there's seven kinds of of medicine spiritual people we we often you know think of uh, and lump them into one term. Well, Sloya Richasha is one who has knowledge. When you learn these ways, you, you, it's a journey. Nobody can make you a medicine man or a medicine woman. You're born with it. And because it's a, it's a they learn and people help them, you gain luck you gain knowledge that the common man don't have. Pejuta, we as a one who works with who, herb, herbs. Well, Ayata, we as one who can see into the future. Wa'apia, we one who can heal you. Mikdomi, we those that have a, a spider medicine. I knew two in my lifetime. One was a man and the other was a woman. They're both gone now. You will be Chasha is popular today to tie tie him up. What can we Chasha is a holy man. But there's also other kinds of of, of besides those seven main ones, there's others. I have an uncle who's a, a bone sucker. Who who pays you that he has? You know, he's, he's in his 70s, but that's what he has. I'm going to end it um, with a, a song. I'm just going to sing a little part of it, the word part. Ich ilongwa is a, a, a word song that gives us encouragement. This is one my, my grandpa used to sing as he went around a camp circle. Hey, oh, ya, Hey, 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 He would sing that as he went around the camp circle. Then afterwards, he would go visit and sit down with the people. He would find out what 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 they need their needs were, how they were doing. The, our leaders they don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, that's one thing my grandpa did, you know. So I say this: uh, go, go, uh, go visit the, your relatives, your elders, and sit and talk to them. Bring them something. You know, we all carry stories. This is older people. And, you know, one day I'm not going to be here. One day your older relative ain't going to be here, but, you know, take the time to sit and talk to them. 
Oh, Mopi de Dakshi. Thank you again. Uh, a wonderful presentation. Hopefully, uh, everybody uh, enjoyed that. And I think we have another session with uh, Dakshi Jim next week. So uh, tune in for that. Ken. Uh, we'll talk uh, uh, about singing and dancing. Oh, oh, all right. Well, stick to the door. Oh, me doke pi doksta ke wa shi ga pik te do. Ah, doksta ke. Oh, doksta ke. Hey, ha, ya, hey, ha, ya, hey, ya.